Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy back again with another installment of the mini series. And this is actually part two of a two part series that I've done on the removal of the cylinder head and the replacement of two bent exhaust valves that I had in this N14 engine. Now this was my fault. However, uh, if you have a timing chain go on an N14 engine, it's highly likely that you will bend valves. So you will likely need to perform this procedure. These two videos should help you walk you through that process. In the previous video, I removed the cylinder head and removed the vent valves. In this video, I'm going to reinstall new valves, and reinstall the cylinder head, torque everything down to spec, and before the end of the video, everything will be up and running, I promise. Now, I got a little creative with the tool that I used to install the new valves. There is a better option, and I will link that down in the description along with additional information, so please check there. Aside from that, this is a long video, so I want to get right to it, and we will catch up at the end. So let's get to the action already in progress. Take it away, Eric. I've gotten a new head gasket and new exhaust valves, and that's all I got. I didn't get any of the other gaskets. My only regret there is not getting new gaskets for the injectors, but I'm, I've got my fingers crossed that that's not gonna be an issue. I know it's a high pressure system. We'll just see what happens. But anyway, uh, why don't we just jump right in and get this thing put back together? Cause you know, I would, I would love to keep moving with this. I'm gonna start here at the cylinder head. Uh, I'm going to install the new valves, uh, also clean out the injectors but mostly I'm concerned with getting the exhaust valves in here. Now, I'm not just gonna put the valves in. I also got some valve lapping compound and I'm gonna make sure I lap them in uh, to make sure that they seal. So there's a little bit of buildup here that you want to uh, address. Also, it's just common practice to do that when you replace valves. I'll put part numbers in the description so that you can uh, also find these valves if you need them. I could have sworn I had a setup already for this, but I had to go and find one. Here's some valve lapping compound, or valve grinding compound. It's a fairly simple process, but uh, just make sure that the valve you lap stays in the uh, hole that it came in. So I'm gonna, when I set these down, set them down so that I can tell which valve goes where. Suction cup barely fits on there. Now oh, there we go. This usually goes a lot more smoothly. I like a lot more smoothly. But you want that dull surface on there. See how it starts out shiny? You want it to be dull. And you also, when you look at the seat, you want to see, see that clearly defined silver line. That's what I wanted. So despite the fact that I didn't get too many turns out of this thing, I think it'll be okay. This one's going a lot better than the other one. Our abrasive's getting into the engine a little bit. It's on the exhaust side. I'm honestly not all that worried about it. Well, I managed to come up with a solution that, well, is extremely fiddly, and that is this modified washer. Uh, this is a valve tool for Hondas, and between that and this, I'm able to uh, get this together or at least I hope. So that fits in there like that and hope it stays. It's nice when it stays because it doesn't always stay. And then this I'm hoping will help me get the valves compressed so I can install the keepers. Let's see if I can't make it work. Uh, like I said, it's nice when it stays together. I believe I've finally got things into position to 
to where this is going to work. Seems uh, allowing gravity to help is helpful. Now to see if we can seal the deal. Really grateful to be able to find these keepers. I realized what I just said. Finders keepers. That looks correctly placed. Now it's up to our spring compressor to do its job. Please don't go everywhere. Ah, yes. So plan B worked. Now let's see if we can make it work again. Dang it. Yep, we have success. All right, I don't know if I remember covering the solution to this problem, but okay, so I've got a traditional, well, this is a Harbor Freight spring compressor or valve spring compressor. I'll post the link in the description to a video I did about changing out valves. This is a Honda tool for getting valves out of Honda cylinder heads, which sit down in similar to this, but it's not quite small enough. So I took a washer, I drilled the hole out large enough to just fit over the uh, top of the retainer, but I also had to shave that one side off to fit into here. Now it did get bent up during the process, but it did work also. Totally cheesy, <laughs> but uh, it did work. I would wager that Mini has a special tool just for this, somewhere, somehow. But I don't, I'm not aware of it, but if I do become aware of it, I will post the link in the description for you. Right, let's get the cylinder head back together. Uh, for starters, I'm gonna put all of these uh, rocker assemblies back in, making sure they're still all hooked together. Making sure they're, they're also seated on the valves. In truth, I only had to take the one side out. I suppose it was good to get both camshafts out. I'm also getting things lined up for when I install the cam tool. My uh, markings are facing upward. And get these all started by hand. Truth be told, it probably would have been a good idea to clean out these bolt holes. And you know what? I am going to clean out the bolt holes. And I'm going to do one more thing. So there is one other thing that I'm going to do. A little bit of pre-lube in each of the cam journals. Doesn't really take much. But this will go a long way towards preventing like any kind of damage that could be caused by this starting up dry, which it will do. Keeping all the numbers in the same orientation. It's all these numbers on the journal, all facing the same way. Because when they make this, they bolt these caps down and then they machine this while it's all bolted together. So each one lives where it lives. I'm going to run these down and then I'm going to find a torque spec, but both the uh, things are facing upward. And I'm going to work my way in, inward out. What I found was that these were 7.3 foot-pounds. Don't have a torque wrench that goes down that small. However, I have this inch-pound torque wrench, which if you multiply 7 by 12, it's 84. So I'm going to go for roughly 84 uh, inch-pounds. And once again, doing this uh, pattern. Just double checking them. That's that. Yeah, why not cam tool? And 
one that was a 27 millimeter, I think. Yes, it was. Marks are up, things are torqued, they're where they're supposed to be. So now, I want to focus on the mating surface. And for that, uh, first I'm going to wipe it down. But whenever you have a steel gasket like I have here for this cylinder head gasket, basically you want a mirror finish on this cylinder head. So you want it to be as clean and as flat as can possibly be. So I don't use any motorized abrasives. I'm just going to use this uh, scrubby pad to get off some of the major stuff. If I could use something less abrasive, I would. I'm going to go grab some carburetor cleaner and a toothbrush and just clean the tips of these injectors and then install the other injectors. All right, I have some carburetor cleaner. can't find my toothbrush, so I got to use this guy for my parts washer. I'm just going to... Soak them a little bit and scrub them a little bit. I think there's only so much I can do here. It was running before. This will likely help it run better. And that honestly didn't take much at all. Seem to clean those up pretty good. Let's get that fuel rail back in there. But before we do, let's give these guys the same treatment. So my question is, where do these O-rings go? They just fit in the top of the rail like that? Or do they go down over the top of the injectors? Like that, which makes a lot more sense. Yep, that's right. A little bit of silicone paste. A little bit on these ends too, because I know there's something in there that it goes into. wipe down there we are cylinder head is ready now let's go get the block ready first thing we're gonna have to do is make sure it's lined up correctly this is the piece that goes into the front of the engine I need to rotate the engine to get it into the position the correct position so that when I install the cylinder head and timing chain everything is in time and we don't end up with this again I'm cleaning off there were a few burrs on this I want to make sure that it mates up with its timing chain gear correctly so that's what I'm in the process of doing now but I did look up new specs for this bolt and it is something like 38 pound feet but then you have to go 180 degrees rotation and you should replace this every time uh, you use it that's a new one I'm gonna go by the fact that that's a new one and the fact that I don't have another one but this way we give you the correct torque specs which by this point, I would have gone back and given you those correct torque specs in the timing chain video. Ah, that feels amazing. That goes on there nicely. Let's get this over to the engine, get things uh, all positioned correctly, and then we'll clean the mating surface. And then we'll install the cylinder head and put this engine back together. All right, we're gonna remove the tool. I'm just going to try to position the engine where it should be positioned, somewhere around there. There it is. So now the bottom end is in time. So the tool is inserted and it puts the engine in this position, which is neutral, where all the cylinders are at the same height. So if they were up and down like it was before, that's not the correct position. This is the correct position everybody's at the same height and just like with the uh, cylinder head I just want to go in 
and clean the surface up. Now before I clean the surface for the final, final time, I definitely want to make sure that the head bolt holes are free of any kind of debris. I go in there with a little bit of compressed air. Definitely want to make sure there's no liquid in any of these holes. Let's start by installing this head gasket. There really is only one way that this can go on, but words usually indicate up. I think I forgot to clean that hole out. One last look. It's the last time you'll see the light of day for a while there, Mr. Cylinder Head. Now, when you put this down on there, lower it gently, like gently. Slowly. Feels like it's on the dowels. Always fit new cylinder head bolts, tighten bolts with cold engine. Starting at 30 Newton meters. And I'd go over them again, the ones in the middle, because I bet you'll get a little more of a turn out of them after the fact. The outer ones not so much, but the ones in the middle seem to need a little bit more. I have this angle gauge, which I could use, and it does work, but we're talking about 90 degrees here. It's not rocket science. So therefore, I'm just gonna use my breaker bar, and I'm gonna do it like this. So I'm gonna try to get as close to this as I can. So where my, where my hand is here, that's gonna be 90 degrees. So I'm just gonna to try to bring it in even with my arm on each turn. So 90 degrees. Of course I try to get it as straight as I can, but this is how I do those. It's just a rough estimate, but it seems to work. One thing I don't like about degreeing, a degree torque, it, well, there's a lot of things I don't like, but I mean, it does work, is the fact that you can't go back and verify that it's at a given torque. It is what it is. Go around for a second time and call it done. I'm gonna get my other breaker bar. This guy makes for less effort. should do them. All right, those are all torques. So these, I'm gonna take these down to uh, 35 foot-pounds or, so the 95s are the long ones and the short one goes to 25. These go to 15. And then this other one was a little bit more, 25. All right, it's all torqued into place. The next step I think is to get the timing chain in place. Everything's all locked down, so we really just need to put it in there. And that's covered in detail in another video, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do it here.
leaving all these loose until I put the tensioner in. Remember how clogged up this guy was? Okay, tension is set. My tool is still in place. These both go to 20 Newton meters. Then the exhaust sprocket goes to 90 degrees, but the Vanos goes to 180. So the Vanos, which is this rear one, goes to 180 degrees. So two 90s is what I'm gonna do to this one. One, Two. This one is a single 90 degrees. Those should be secure. The damper hub to crankshaft stage one is 50 Newton meters or 36.8 foot pounds and then an additional 100 degrees but I found later that it said additional 180 not 100 degrees. 180 is going to be easier to do because once again that's just going to be two 90s. So we'll get this crank bolt tightened down to 50 Newton meters to start. Okay, so that's the initial 50 Newton meters. And given my issues in the past, I'm going the full 180 here. There's the first 90. And the second 90. And everything's now torqued down and in time we should be able to remove our tool let's get our uh, upper guide on with as tense as this feels i almost think i should have done this earlier i was just worried about breaking it it seems rather fragile i have a confession to make this fastener right here, I just swapped out with another eight millimeter fastener. It was stripping out. It goes all the way down through. I just put in a longer bolt. So the old one was stripped and it wasn't tightening up and I didn't feel confident with it. So I just tried that, it worked. Sorry, I didn't share that with you. I wasn't sure if it's gonna work, but it did. These were stripped before I got here. If you run into the same problem, a longer eight millimeter bolt should do the trick. Like I said, these go all the way down through. And if you really get desperate, I suppose you could put a really long bolt and a nut on the other side. Although that is cheesy as cheese can get. I'm gonna wait until that engine mounts in place. It's too precarious at the moment. Speaking of which, is it time to do that? It might just be. Let's start by getting the stuff on the engine, which I think is this guy. Wait a second before I run this down. And that is this wire. The wire loom, I should call it.
just trying to make sure that there's not an electrical connection or something that I'm missing. I got the fuel pressure sensor, I've got the Vanos plugged in, and the rest of the stuff I believe goes to the intake. And this guy comes back around to the mass airflow sensor. Whoops. This setup sucks. And I think it's because I had to lift it and drop it and lift it and drop it. Bam. I am very glad that is no longer flopping around. It's a 19. Let's see what we can do to get this intake down in here since, at least in my opinion, that's going to be the most challenging like I already plugged the injectors in the fuel pressure sensor the rest of these I believe all go to the intake also the Vanos is plugged in so all those guys are ready to go Let's see if we can gently get this guy back in here I want to double check, make sure all my electrical connections are connected. They seem to be. Before I get too happy, I'm going to go under the car, install this bracket for the AC. I believe I may also need to tighten up this hose if I remember right and uh, there's also that fastener that goes into the side of the intake and since I've got a little play in it now I think it's the ideal time to look into that here's that 10 millimeter it goes up into here That other fastener is going to have to be tightened from up top because I can't reach it from under here. It's pointed upwards anyway. I almost forgot about our AC bracket. Sort of keeps things out of the way of spinny stuff. And keeping things out of the way of spinny stuff is good. Also, just for the heck of it, going to plug in the AC compressor because, well, I know that gets plugged in there. All right, let's... Get the rest of this intake mounted. I think that's the intake done. Get this thermostat housing.
there's two pegs that this goes into down into these holes and then this goes over top of here I don't like this exposed area here so valve cover These feel like valve cover things. Longest ones go here on the end. The rest are all the same size, except we've got the special one in the middle and the front. I know some of you are mad that I'm just reusing this gasket, but I'm sure it's expensive. tell the way these things go by the witness marks like one side you sort of see large areas and then the other side you see all round the round faces the fasteners once you see that at least to me it seems pretty straightforward from there Although this is my bleeder, so I'll leave that open because that's where I bled the cooling system out last time I filled it up. Getting all the fasteners in the bracket before I run it down. This way, fasteners actually go in where I need them to. How about before I forget, I take care of this. The worst part about this whole thing is this gasket, in my opinion. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. As long as it stays on there, we're good. But if it doesn't, well, we're not good. Everything's happening at once. I don't want to forget this either. I like heat shields on turbos. There's some that are rounded at the top and there's some that are square at the top. And the ones that are rounded at the top, there's only two of. The other ones, there's three of. That's how I'm determining what goes where.
This is a flex joint, so I don't mind tightening this all the way. Let's get this front end on. This goes on like this. Should have stuck it on there before so that it just clipped in, but I forgot. Definitely want to get this fan connected. These go in like this goes in the top of the radiator. Say we reconnect this radiator hose just so that it's done. And these pliers work great. And I just realized that this should have went up above that. I wonder why that was going in kind of weird. I think we're ready for that final piece.
Calling it old coolant is kind of a misnomer since it is the new coolant. It just uh, got drained out temporarily. I'm gonna leave it at that for the moment. There's only a little bit left in my jug. I know some leaked out, so I may need to get a little more. I'm thinking there's enough here to start it. Let's uh, get the negative battery cable hooked up and see, well, if it explodes. Negative battery cable's hooked up. I'm gonna, well, push the button, see what happens. shaky it was last time I started it up to for a minute until it cleared up So it's a little shaky, but I'm not too concerned. I think once I take it out and drive it around a bit, the more it runs, the smoother it seems to get. Well, that was a lot of information that I just threw at you in the past two videos, but if you have bent valves in your Mini Cooper, especially if it has an N14 engine, I hope this information is gonna be helpful to you because as I said at the beginning of the video, sometimes timing chains go on these N14 engines. Well, okay. Timing chains go on these N14 engines and there's the high probability of bending valves. These two videos should walk you through the process. Now I'll link part one down in the description. I'll link the tools I use down in the description. I'll link additional videos uh, that could pertain to like putting the front end and everything back together for you down in the description. So if you have additional questions about anything you've seen here, uh, including torque specs, all that stuff, description. If you have automotive questions not covered in this video, I ask that you head to ericthecarguy.com, also linked in the description. <laughs> I want to thank you so much for watching and please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all those things that help me make a living. I super appreciate that. Thank you very much. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty, and I will see you next time.